What's up? Welcome to The Awakening. My name is Megan Thompson and I am currently in month two of my race and I am on Peace Squad. What is The Awakening? You are probably asking yourself. Good question. So The Awakening is a time when three squads, preferably, are in the same location at the same time. It doesn't happen too often and when it does, it's kind of like it is a blessing from God. It's like the stars are aligning because it doesn't happen too often. So currently, we have three squads here. We have F Squad, which they are on their 11th month of the world race. We have K Squad, which they are on their fourth month of the world race. And we have P Squad, which we are on our second month of the world race. So the awakening is just a time for us to learn from one another, to pour into each other, to see where we are at various stages on the world race, and just to be able to edify and uplift one another as well as be able to learn from keynote speakers from Adventures and Missions who travel all the way here, spend their Thanksgiving with us because they love us that much, and just take the time to pour into us. So we are currently learning all about ownership and how we can truly own our world race to make the most of this experience for God. So some of our story leaders for the various squads, we decided to brainstorm and put our heads together because we wanted to truly be able to make the most of this time at the awakening because we are in such different stages of the race. So we came together and we came up with a few questions that we would ask people from each of the three squads, as well as some of our ministry hosts that we would be able to share with you. So it's really exciting to get their input and their take on how the race has impacted and changed their lives. How, like what month you're in, what squad you're on, in the beginning. Now are you ready? Are you are ready? Sweet. Okay. Right. My name is Rashad Cohen. Um, I'm on the second month of the world race in P Squad. P Squad? Hey, I'm Marissa Morales. I'm on P Squad. And um, hello, it's month two of the world race. And I'm psyched to be here. I'm at an awakening um, with F Squad and K Squad. F Squad is on month 11 and K Squad is on month 4. So um, basically what we're here to do is learn about um, what the Lord's been doing in their squads and their teams and we're pouring into each other and giving each other new insight and perspective on our races and what we're learning. Well, I am Megan Kennedy and I'm on P Squad and this is our second month on the world race. Why are you grateful to be on the world race? Man, uh, there's so many reasons why I'm grateful, but obviously, like the number one reason why I'm grateful is just to be able to just to serve God uh, to this magnitude. I never saw myself you know, traveling across the world, but due to God's grace and His glory, um, I'm doing it. You know, like, and where I come from, like for an African American male to do that is very rare. Mm -hmm. And so I'm grateful to be able like to be a hope for somebody else, like young boys, I'm passionate about inspiring young boys. So for them just to view my life and be like, you know, one day I can do that, that's why I'm grateful. Mm, that's you know? incredible. Yeah. I'm grateful to be here because I belong here. Mm -hmm. um, and I know that I'm pursued and loved here, um, just like I am at home, but um, in a different way because it's more intimate with the Lord and I'm not distracted by so many other um, people and, um, just easy access to things that, you know, that just allow me to be complacent and not as intimate with the Lord as I should be. Mm. How did the Lord use the race to change your life? Um, we've only been on month two, but he's already, um, as world racers say, wrecked my life. You know, <laughs> he's wrecked my life for real. In such a way where um, I didn't have any expectations going into the race, but you know, for God to blow my mind. Like that, I said, like, God, I just want you to blow my mind. I didn't know what that's going to look like. But I think I made the mistake of putting on, like, this huge missionary hat. You know, I think I'm about to save the world. And then once I wasn't seeing miracles and the healings and all that stuff, um, I got, like, discouraged. But God was just like, you know, just focus on me. Like, it's like the small moments. Like, invite me in in your daily life. Mm -hmm. And ever since I've done that, like, my desire for God has grown just tremendously. <laughs> Like to the point, like every time I wake up, it's just I'm praying, just like for more of you, God. Like I just want that desire. And if 
I walk away from the race, not seeing one healing or miracle, I'm okay because like, I know God. And just the thought of Him being limitless, and I can just get more of Him, is my important thing. And that's why I want to tell the world, like, God is limitless. If you want more of God, He'll give that to you because He's just that good. Why did you come on the world race? Um, honestly, uh, the Lord just called me out of a season of complacency, and um, I was comfortable, and I know that I love to be challenged, but I wasn't really asking for a challenge. So last year, um, I had made it a point that this year, in 2018, that I would live out my faith radically, and this is just what He called me to do, um, like a month before I signed up for it, so. Um, the reason why I came on the race in the first place um, is God promised four years ago that I would travel across the world mm. um, to proclaim the gospel. I didn't know how that was going to look like or like the magnitude, like I said previously, but um, it was a promise of Him. And just, just being able just to be here, like when I tell y'all, it's mind blowing. Like sometimes I just sit back, my teammates got upset because I'm like, man, I'm in Belize right now. We in Belize. And the reason why like, I'm here is just to inspire others, you know, and just to show others who God is. But most importantly, just to listen to people's stories. Like that's been amazing in itself, you know, just to listen. And that's what God was just, you know, telling me, you always have to proclaim the gospel, just listen to other people's stories. That's all they want, mm. you know, like to know that their voice matters. Mm. So just being able to do that is amazing. Of course I can do that, you know, in the U.S., but right. to be able to do that globally mm. is special. Mm. So. How have you seen the Lord use the race to impact host ministries? And if you could, tell me a story. Ooh, yes. Uh, it was actually our first month back in Belize. Um, we were working with this one family, and they had this ministry called Hope for Life, where they would be ministering to um, mothers who are either single or they're just struggling or maybe they just don't have materials that they need to care for their children. And they just take that time to minister to them. And they had this fundraiser coming up and they'd been praying for months for someone to come in in order to film something and sort of like show what their ministry is so they could help raise the money. And then when we got there, um, my team literally had three people who did videos and stuff. So that was like a huge answer to their prayer. So we spent maybe two days just filming at their ministry and just, we just made this video for their fundraiser. And it was just amazing to just like, it's our first month and God's already answering someone's prayer that we didn't even realize. So it's like, look at God. <laughs> oh, that's so yeah. cool. What's been your biggest takeaway of the awakening so far? Ooh, I love how like the messages, you know, that um, Reed, that Reed and David have given thus far is something that we, you don't hear a lot about mm -hmm. ownership and like time being an like essence, like you would never get that time. And that's something I'm so passionate about mm. is like just time in general in life. Like that's something that you can never get back. So why not take the opportunity that God has given you every single day, every single second, every single moment mm. and just give it your all. Mm. And that's what he spoke about, you know, this morning was that, you know, so why not like serve God every single second? You know, just invite him in. Cause that's a moment that you can never take back, giving him glory for. And that kind of like just brought in my mind like when it came to that. And that ownership, you know, like, I think we as humans don't own our life like God has called us to own our life. Like you can take ownership in your dreams. You can take ownership in your, like your relationship with God. You can take ownership like with your past. And once you really own your past, I think that's gonna set you up for life. Mm. Like, turn those obstacles into like a glory, you know, like to glorify God. Mm -hmm. Like once you own that, like you own your life because Satan can no longer like, you know, blame you for your past, you know, like you cannot, you're no longer in the basement as uh, Reed said. So, yeah. Oh, that's such good perspective. <laughs> thank you. You know it. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. Oh.
crushed it. That was great. Ooh. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> crushed it. <laughs> Incredible. Oh, cool. that was really good. Thank uh, you. Yeah. That's it? Yeah. Cool, yo. We appreciate